Hey everybody, welcome back to step two of how to code Space Invaders in P5. This is what the sketch file looks like right now, and when we play it, we can move our little green spaceship guy to the right and left with the key presses of the right and left arrow. What we're going to do next is add the aliens. Our aliens actually use external image files to be displayed on the screen instead of just drawing rectangles. So we're going to first upload those into our sketch. Over here in the sketch files area, come in and create a folder. Name it IMG for images, and it'll appear at the top. Then inside that folder, click on the down arrow next to the name images, and let's create or actually upload a file. Now, I am going to provide a zip file in the description below or a link to a zip file that you can download and find the, the four images that I'm going to use. If you don't know how to open and extract a zip file, go watch another video to see how to do that. Pretty simple, but you can't upload a zip file here into, into uh, P5. You have to upload individual images. I have my four images saved here. You can see what they look like. I've downloaded them, extracted them, and they're all ready to go. Now back in P5, we click in here, go find those images and upload them. You can select all four at once and open. After a moment, they will be all uploaded. You can see they're uploaded by noticing them over here in the sketch files area. They are named Alien 1A and 1B and Alien 2A and B. Once it's finished uploading, you can close this window and you're ready to go. Next, we need to add another class file for the alien type. So again, we can close this image folder, but up here, uh, create a new file. Call it alien.js and click add file. Inside this empty uh, P5 file, you want to go ahead and create a class called alien with a capital A. Remember, all class names are always start with a capital letter. Next, go ahead and create the constructor method. This particular constructor method is going to receive five inputs, which we call parameters, X, Y, image capital A, image capital B, and point value. Inside the constructor, we're going to use keyword this and assign value to each of the properties, passing in the values from the parameter string. Now I'm hard coding in some values for width and height, and these are based on the actual widths and heights of the uh, images that I uploaded. You can go take a look at those if you want and see the size. They're, they vary a little bit, but generally speaking, they're each about this size. Now I have a property called this.alive, and it's set to true when the game starts. That means each of the aliens is alive at the beginning of the game, and when it's hit with a laser, then this will get set to false and it will no longer be drawn. Go ahead and enter in each of these properties. This dot image A and this dot image B will, will uh, hold the actual images from our image folder that will be used to display on the screen. Current image will always be set to A to begin with, and the point value for each of the two different types of aliens will be stored in this dot PTS. This dot radius will be set to 20, which is a little bit smaller than the width of the height. This particular property is only used for collision detection, um, and uh, we'll, we'll learn more about that a little bit later. And we're going to set the X direction to 1 to begin with, which means when the game starts, the aliens will all move towards the right. In addition to the constructor, we need a show method. Similarly with the ship, the show method will be the place where we draw our aliens on the screen or on the canvas. But again, this time we're not using rectangles or ellipses or anything like that. We're simply going to use images that we've uploaded into, into P5. This is how you do it. 
first of all, all of the drawing of the aliens is going to happen inside an if statement that asks if this dot alive. This is a shortcut way of saying if this dot alive equals true. You don't have to put the equals true here. Just state the name of the property. If it's true, then this condition will be true. And so if the uh, alien is alive, we're going to draw it. So I'll put a comment here. Only show if alive. Inside this if statement, we're going to put another if statement. If this dot current image, IMG, equals capital A, then we're going to draw one of the images, which would be IMAG. This is a keyword in P5. It's how you load an image. This dot IMG A, comma, this dot X, this dot Y, this dot W, and this dot H. So the image function, which is what this is calling, there's an image function in P5, it requires five parameters or five arguments. The name of the image, which is stored in IMG A, the X, Y, and width and height. We're going to go ahead and put another if statement in here. You can just copy this one because most of it's the same and paste it, control V. And now we're asking if this current image is capital B the second image, then we're going to display image B, and the uh, pro other properties are all the same, X, Y, width, and height. There you go. That's all we need at this stage of the alien. Later on, we're going to add some more code, uh, some more methods that will move the aliens, but for now, we just want to see if we can get them to show up on the screen. Now we need to go back to our sketch file and start adding some code for the aliens. First of all, the very top of the sketch file, let's create a variable, and it will be an array. We remember from previous assignments that to create an array, we simply use a set of square brackets. This is now an empty array that will hold alien objects. After creating that array, we're also going to now use a function called preload. The preload function is built into P5, and it allows us to load images and do other things before the game starts. Inside the preload function, we're going to load four different images, the images that we put inside our IMG folder. You can see what we're doing here is uh, creating a variable, calling it alien1a, and using the load image function to grab that image from the IMG folder and placing it inside this variable. We're going to repeat this three more times for the other images. I would just copy and paste and change the necessary information. As you finish, make sure each of the image names corresponds to the correct variable name on the left. If we test our game now, we'll see that we still don't see the aliens on the screen. We need to do, uh, we need to add some more code to the setup and draw functions. First of all, in setup, we're going to use the image mode function and set its value to center. This will cause all of the images of the aliens to be drawn from their center point out, which will make it easier to do collision detection later on. Next, we're going to create uh, the uh, bottom row of aliens. We're going to create two variables, start x and start y, and give them uh, the value of 80. This is going to be the beginning point on the canvas where we're going to start drawing the uh, bottom row of aliens. Now we need a for loop that is going to loop six times because there's six aliens on the bottom row. Using the aliens array, square bracket i, this references each individual element in the array, one by one. We are going to assign it a new alien, capital A alien, which is the constructor of our alien. Remember, that particular constructor took several inputs. We're going to take the i and multiply it 
by the start x plus 80. This will space out the aliens across the screen. Start y be the next variable. Uh, alien 1a references the first image, alien 1b, the second image, and then the, the value 5, which is the point value of the bottom row of aliens. Now we're going to copy this for loop, control C to copy. And this time we're going to change the counter variable to j. We're going to count this time from 6 to 12, which will also loop six times. Actually, it'll go from 6 to 11, which is six times. And then make sure we're incrementing j in each case, not i. And now we're going to need a couple other variables so that we can set these uh, aliens at a slightly different place. We're going to uh, put a comment in here, create top row of aliens. And the start x doesn't need to be changed, but the start y should be given a new value of 40. This means it'll be up higher on the canvas above the other aliens. And we're also going to create, I'm going to create another variable called offset, which is going to kind of be like a counter. It's going to start at 0 and go up by 1 inside the loop. And you'll see how that works in a little bit. Now, inside the second loop, we need to take, change every reference to i to j, because that's the counter we're now using in this loop. Here inside the alien constructor, we, we don't want to use i or j there, actually. What we want to do is use the offset, which currently has a value of 0. Multiply that by start x plus 80, start y. And then all we need to do here is change the name of the, very, of the uh, image from alien 2a or from alien 1a and 1b to 2a and 2b. We're going to give a point value of 10 to this upper row of aliens. The last thing we need to do inside this for loop is increment offset by 1. Now if I run this, I actually see an error. Uh, alien is not defined. I forgot to add the alien class to my index page. Let's go back and do that now. Again, we want to, in the index file, copy one of these lines, paste it, change the name of the file to alien.js. So now we have three files being input. Back to our sketch file. And again, if we run this, we don't get any errors, but we still don't see our aliens, okay? That's because we've created all the aliens, um, but we just can't, we haven't drawn them yet. One thing you can do to check an array is to output the values in the array to the console. Console.log, aliens is the name of the array. And if we do that, interestingly enough, down here now in the console, we see 12 alien objects inside square brackets. If we open those and look inside any one of them, we will see all the details of a specific alien. We'll see its x, y, its width and height, whether or not it's alive, even the images, some information about the images, and its point value radius, etc. And so uh, we can use the console to look inside the data that we have stored inside our array and see what's in there. Once you're done testing that, you might want to comment out that line of code. Okay, we're almost done. The last thing we need to do is add some code to the draw function and draw each of our aliens in the array. To do that, we'll need a for loop for var i gets 0 while i is less than. Now, what we do here is use the actual array and say array the aliens dot length. This will ensure that we loop through the entire array and then say i plus plus. Remember, for loops and arrays are made for each other. You use them together all the time. So inside this array that's now going through the entire length of the array, we're simply going to say aliens, square bracket, i, which references each 
each alien individually, one by one, dot show. Okay, since each one of those aliens represents an alien in the class, the alien class, we know that the alien class has a show method. And as soon as we call show, as you can see here, all of a sudden we see all 12 aliens, just like that. Seems like magic, but it's not. It's just code. Okay, this brings us to the end of step two of this series. I think it's going to be four videos in total to finish this project. In the next video, we're going to get these aliens to start moving across the canvas. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.